And we're back here on Open. What does the future hold for immigrant children? As hundreds of families are crossing the border, they're being separated from their children, some of them right here in the Bronx. Here on the phone joining us to talk more about that, New York State Senator Marisol Alcantara, who joins us and welcomes her now to Open. Thank you for sharing with us. Senator, good to have you. Thank you for inviting me. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And listen, I want to thank you for sharing a little bit on this conversation. Let's talk and get right into it. Uh, I talked a little bit earlier in the show about uh, a judge in California issuing the stay, saying that, listen, families have to be reunited uh, with their loved ones, and particularly children under the age of five. New York State did jump in on this lawsuit. I just want to get your thoughts on the latest ruling and how this affects us. Um, we are very excited um, because those of us that come from communities of color and marginalized communities know that this is not the first time that this country uh, gets involved in separating families. You know, for a long time, that's how this country became the richest country in the planet, by separating African Americans from their children. Um, we feel really good. Um, this is the just thing to do. A lot of the stuff that the reason why so many immigrants are coming across the border is because they are victims of the United States foreign policy in a lot of this country. I want to talk a little bit about your comments because you, uh, you issued a statement actually condemning the Trump administration of uh, separating, saying that I'm profoundly saddened by the news that the hundreds of immigrant families on the U.S. border have been torn from their children. These families have come here out of desperation only to be met by cruelty. Oh, totally. You know, like I said uh, before, um, we were the ones responsible in 2009 for doing a coup d'etat in Honduras, debilitating the democratic elected governor that they had, the government that they had. We uh, provided weapons to Nicaragua, to El Salvador, and all these countries. So when their economy has totally collapsed, when they are run by gang members and by corrupt, uh, by a corrupt government, People have no choice but to flee, to come to the United States. Um, you know, and it's interesting how his administration pretends like um, the United States doesn't benefit from all these immigrants coming over. Um, of course they benefit because all the farm work in this country is done by immigrant workers. A lot of them are documented. All the cheap labor that we have here is done by us. So um, it's like um, the Trump administration wants to give his border, uh, he says this idea that he doesn't want any immigrants from this country, undocumented immigrants, when he himself has benefited from employing, employing undocumented workers doing construction for him or working in the uh, business ventures. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about what's going on locally? I mean, we've heard about families being separated and families right here in the borough of the Bronx. Uh, what can you let our viewers know about uh, how Bronxites have been affected by this? Oh, you know, um, the little the case of a young man, Junior, that was killed. Um, his parents were immigrants, are immigrants from the Dominican Republic. Um, I don't know if you saw in the news yesterday, the five kids or six kids that were involved, only one of them spoke English. The rest of them needed translation. That means that they have not been in this country uh, probably one or two, three years. So what we are talking about immigration and the border and what's happening in the border, we also need to invest in this, and like, you know, this vibrant immigrant community that we have in the city of New York. Um, my friends and I went to the neighborhood where Junior was killed. There's not a parking site. There's not a community center. Uh, there's construction going around all around the South Bronx. They are not employing these young folks. Um, you know, and what it's great that we are paying attention to what's going on on a national level. Uh, but it, I thought it was kind of like weird that the mayor found time to take a plane all the way to Texas to be at the border. But he couldn't. Uh, it took him four days to get to the Bronx where this um, kid was killed and where this immigrant community, um, you know, there were over a thousand people there. And most of them immigrants. Or the and when we talk about the immigrant community, huge numbers right here in the borough of the Bronx. You're saying that there should be added resources uh, in the community of Belmont. Give me a little bit more about the resources available for immigrants, given the fact that this heightened climate. Are there a lot of resources still available for immigrants today? Not in um, the Bronx. It doesn't have as many resources as other uh, boroughs, believe it or not. 
Um, my office is located in Upper Manhattan. Um, you know, I have a very good working relationship with my sister, Assemblywoman Carmen de la Rosa, Councilmember Rodriguez. And I can tell you that over 50 percent of the people that come to our offices to get immigration services or to get legal services, they just cross the 207 bridge or the 184th bridge. Uh, you know, there's, there's over 10 organizations in Washington Heights that provide immigration services. The Bronx right now has the largest concentration of Dominicans. The Bronx right now has the largest concentration of West Africans. If you go to the park sector area, it's a big Bengali community. There's a big Mexican, Albanian community. There should be an immigration office in every corner in the Bronx because that Bronx, that's where the immigrant community lives. And we need to make sure that our immigrant kids, I, I bet you that I was looking at the kids yesterday, sir, and I could tell you that how, all those kids are going to be deported because nine out of ten, they're not American citizens. And we don't have anyone doing work with Latino youth out there in the street telling them you are a green card holder. Anything you do can get you deported. This is information that is not getting out to the street to the people that need it most. All right, New York Senator Marisol Alcantara, thank you so much for joining us here on Open, sharing a little bit about the conversation about undocumented immigrants. Thank you, Senator. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. All righty. Thank you. And all right, we want you to stay with us. we got more show coming up after this. We're going to introduce you to a very special organization.